Okay, so now we're looking at 10.2, which it gets a little more involved than 10.1, and we're still working with graphing quadratic functions. So now in 10.2, we're going to be able to graph something that looks like y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. And the big difference here um, from 10.1 is that we actually have a b value um, to go with our x. So what we saw in 10.1 was just something like x squared minus 3. Now we need to um, learn how to graph where we have a b value in this case is negative 2. So on that note, oftentimes to help us out, it might just be easier to identify a, b, and c and write them off to the side. So in this equation, our a value is the coefficient in front of x squared. So in this case, it's just 1. Our b value is the coefficient in front of the x. And it's not just going to be 2 because our standard form is ax squared plus uh, bx plus c. So our b value is negative 2. And in the same way, our c value is negative 3. So we can help to write those off to the side just so we don't lose track, don't get confused, and can go from there. So in 10.1, to find the vertex, you always got to use 0 as your x value. In 10.2, that's not the case. And in general, that's not the case. Uh, to find our x value, we need to use negative b over 2a. This is also used to find the axis of symmetry. Just think the opposite of b over 2a. So in this case, for our problem, our b value is negative 2. So we're taking the opposite of negative 2 over 2 times a, which is 1. Negative b, negative negative 2, divided by 2 times a. Well, the opposite of negative 2 is just a positive 2. 2 times 1 is just a positive 2. That's just 1. So x is equal to 1. This is our axis of symmetry. And that means that our vertex is at x equals 1. Now we need to plug x equals 1 in to find our y coordinate. So y equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. 1 squared is just 1. 2 times 1 is just negative 2. So 1 minus 2 minus 3. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Minus 3 more is negative 4. So y is equal to negative 4. That means our vertex is at 1, negative 4. So this is our general process. It might seem tedious, but this is our process. You use negative b over 2a, this is something that you're just going to have to know, to find our x value, then you plug your x value in to find your y value. But now we're not done, now we need to fill out the rest of our table. So we already have our vertex as 1, negative 4, and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did in 10.1. We're going to find a couple values to the left and to the right of our vertex. It's easy to plug in 0. 0 squared is 0, minus 2 times 0 is still 0, minus 3 is just negative 3. And since our axis of symmetry is at 1, x equals 1, we know that when we plug in 2, we're just going to get negative 3. Now we can choose, we could either plug in negative 1 or we could plug in 3. It doesn't really matter. Let's plug in 3. If we plug in 3, we get 3 squared, which is 9, minus 2 times 3, which is negative 6, minus 3 more is 0. That means when we plug in negative 1, we still get 0. You can see down here, I already did the example for when x is equal to negative 2. You plug negative 2 in, we get 5, and that would also be the case for 4. So now to graph, we just plot our points. Here's our vertex, 1, negative 4. Then we have point 2, negative 3, 0, negative 3. We have point 3, 0, negative 1, 0, etc. And then we can just connect with a nice smooth line like what we saw in 10.1. So once you get your vertex, the process is the exact same as 10.1. But to find the vertex, recall, we need to use the opposite of b over 2a. So if you'd like, go ahead and try this one on your own. You have y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 9.
Okay, here we go. We're first going to find our vertex. Negative b over 2a, our negative b is negative negative 6, our a is 3. So we have positive 6 over 6, we get 1 again. We're going to find our y coordinate of our vertex. We're going to plug 1 in. 1 squared is 1, 3 times 1 is just 3. Minus 6 times 1, so now we're at negative 3 plus 9 should get us to 6. So our vertex now is 1, 6, and our axis of symmetry is x equals 1. So I thought I had this so I could click on it, maybe not. Let's just sketch this out. x of symmetry is x equals 1. If we fill out the rest of our table, here's our vertex 1, 6, which will be somewhere in this neighborhood. We're just sketching things out. We'll have 0, 9. And we have negative 1, 18. We're going to be way up here. So here was a pretty rough sketch. We said this was 6, this was 9. And that's the general look of our graph. We're opening up, recall, because our A value is positive. Just a note on minimums and maximums, you've noticed with these parabolas that we have a vertex, and the vertex is either the lowest point or the highest point. If it is the lowest point, that means our graph has a minimum. There is a lowest point, and then we only get higher from there on either side. The minimum would be the y coordinate, or the y part of your vertex, the maximum the same way. So if this is the highest point, uh, the maximum value would be the y part of your vertex when your vertex is a maximum. So here just don't we're not asked to find what it is we're just asked whether or not it has a minimum or a maximum. If our a value is negative or positive that is going to tell us everything we need to know. If our a value is negative that means we're opening down we're sad it's a sad face. But that means that we have a maximum value somewhere probably in this neighborhood. In a similar way, if we have an A value that's positive, we are happy, so we have a minimum value, which will be the lowest point on our parabola. So now let's actually find these minimums or maximums. First of all, if we have negative 3x squared minus 12x plus 10, will this open up or down? You're right, this is going to open down, so it'll be a maximum. But now we asked, we're asked to find what that is. All we need to do is find the y-coordinate of our vertex. Well, to find our vertex, we go negative b over 2a. So negative b, in this case, would be positive 12. The opposite of negative 12 is positive 12, over 2 times negative 3. So that's 12 over negative 6. That's just negative 2. But that's not going to be our maximum value because that's just our x-coordinate. Our y-coordinate is where we plug negative 2 in for x. So we have negative 3 times negative 2 squared minus 12 times negative 2 plus 10. So let's see how this shakes out. Negative 2 squared is positive 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 2 is a positive 24, then we have plus 10. So now you have negative 12 plus 24, that's positive 12 plus 10 is 22. So our max is y equals 22. This is the highest point on our graph. 22. So go ahead and try this next one on your own. If you'd like to pause the video, go right ahead. So our graph is opening up. That means we have a minimum value. We're going to do the same process that we saw in the last problem. So negative b over 2a. And so we have negative 18 over 2 times 6. That's negative 18 over 12, which is negative 1.5 or negative 3 over 2. Fractions are just numbers, don't be afraid of fractions. 
plug that in. Remember, this is our x value. Our y value, 6 times negative 3 over 2 squared plus 18 times negative 3 over 2 plus 13. Okay, now remember we're multiplying fractions, so we multiply right across. This is 6 times 9 over 4 plus negative 3 over 2 times 18. You can think 18 and the 2 cross out to make 9 over 1, so 9 times negative 3 is minus 27 plus 13. So this might be the trickier part. 6 times 9 over 4 is going to be 54 over 4, but that can simplify as 27 over 2. Negative 27 plus 13, that's minus 14. So now we have a little mess going on. We have, dang, we have 27 over 2 minus 14. Well, 14 is the same as 28 over 2. So 27 over 2 minus 28 over 2 might be easier for us to do a little computation. Now we just know this is 27 minus 28, which is negative 1 over 2. So our minimum value is at negative 1 half. Don't be afraid of fractions. They're just numbers. Okay, one more quick thing that I think most of you will find very, very, very helpful. You might have noticed this in 10.1 already, but you'll for sure notice this in 10.2 when you're working on these graphs. If you have an A value of 1, so this won't always be the case, but when your A value is 1, there is a really nice shortcut for graphing. And we call it the 135 method. So what how the 135 method works is you find the vertex. And then when you find the vertex, you can just move one unit to the right and one unit up, then one unit to the right and then three up, and then one to the right and five up, then seven, nine, eleven, and so forth. And since you already found your vertex, you'd be able to reflect that over because you would have your axis of symmetry at your vertex. So graphing becomes very, very fast. Let's just look at one example of how this works. Uh, if this confuses you, uh, don't bother, but it, it's meant to help you. If we want to find the vertex of y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, we take the opposite of b, which in this case would be positive 2, over 2 times a. And a is just 1. So we get 2 over 2, so that's just 1. So the x coordinate of our vertex is 1. Let's find our y coordinate. So y is equal to 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. So 1 minus 2 minus 3, that's negative 4. So our vertex is at 1, negative 4. Now, here's how the 1, 3, 5 method works. Instead of plugging in 0 and plugging in one, 2 and plugging in 3 and plugging in negative 1, we can just go 1 to the right, 1 up. Then 1 to the right, 3 up. Then 1 to the right, 5 up. This is just a pattern that always shows up when your a value is 1. And then we can reflect that over because we have our axis of symmetry at x is equal to 1. Oops. And once again, this only, only works when your a value is 1. So if you were trying to graph this or this, that it would not work. If you're trying to graph this, we're not using the 135 method there. But we would, in this case, notice we go up 1, up 3, up 5. We've already done this, but we've done it the long way. If your A value, excuse me, if your A value is 1, you can use your 135 method. So it's hopefully just a nice little shortcut for you. Um, but that will wrap us up for 10.2.